Verse 3 says, And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. To see Jesus as he is produces hope. This hope produces purity. And there are some things, once again, you just won't get caught up in. You will not yield to. You won't give some lame excuse. Well, I'm just a man. I I got needs. No, the king is coming. See, you don't believe the king is coming when you're unfaithful to your spouse. You don't believe it. You wouldn't live that way. You don't believe the king is coming when you tell a lie instead of repent. You don't believe the king is coming when you yield yourself to alcohol yet again. If you believed he was coming, you would live sober. You would be on watch. You would say, I can't even have the appearance of evil. I've got to really guard this. I've got to pay close attention. I've got to be vigilant. There's an enemy loose. If you believed a tornado was imminent, there are certain actions that you would take that you wouldn't take any other time. Since I... I, won't talk about you. Let me talk about me. There was a night. I opened the front door when I lived at Har- on Harvard Street here in Amarillo. And they said a tornado warning is coming from Sauncy. It's coming down 45th Street. I went and opened my door. I had three babies at the time. I could hear the sound of the freight train. I kicked that door open and I yelled louder than I've yelled once today with this microphone. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. I'm not saying I was the only one that did it, but it caused certain action on my part. There was no other night I kicked the door open and rebuked a tornado. But when it was imminent, I did. Then the following week, I was in Oklahoma City. You see, the day before I rebuked the one here, Moore had been hit by an F5 tornado. The very next week, I was there with Mark and Deborah. My family was there. Garrett and Farrell and their family were there. They had talked about it all day. I remember that day. They, you know how they say, most likely, you're in the red. And I mean, right where we were, it was, I mean, we were right in the middle of the red. And I remember that day, because we were very watchful. We had talked about it. We said, we're going to watch this, because we had seen just a few miles from where Mark and Deborah lived. I mean, it's 20 miles or whatever, but you'd seen part of a city just wiped off the map. That's pretty startling when you see that. But they said, it's imminent. And I remember we were sitting on the back porch. We were watching. It was a clear day to start out with. But next thing you know, clouds started forming. Next thing you know, the sky turned green. We were watching the television. They said, oh, my, this is two miles wide, the largest F5 tornado ever recorded this wide. It's in El Reno, and it was heading straight for our neighborhood. Mark said, we better go. We have tornado, no tornado shelter. The tornado was imminent. We took precautions. Many people died. Many professional storm chasers died that night because of the way that thing turned. We said, we're not even playing around with this. We loaded up in two or three cars. I don't remember now because there's a lot of us. And we said, boom, we're boogieing to Tulsa. We get about halfway between Oklahoma City and Tulsa before we stopped. We said, no. We're not even taking a chance. We'd rather stay at home and fellowship and have fun. Eat, crying out loud. But not when the tornado was imminent. Why am I telling you that? Not just to tell you a story that happened, but so you understand something. Some Christians are living in unforgiveness some bitterness, jealousy, envy, strife, other works of the flesh, simply because they don't believe he's coming. But there's an urgency to some other believers that they expect he's coming. He's coming. Oh, he's coming. His return is imminent. 